Alrighty, Doc here from North America. It is Friday here, and it is TGIF. It's the end of the week, another fun-filled week, and uh, here we go, you know. Uh, stock markets have been looking very, very firm, very strong, but a little surprise this morning when seeing the uh, dollar lifting again. But uh, I think that's more of a dead cat bounce. Somehow, no, I think we're going to see a little bit weaker dollar, you know, start to play the other side of the range. But at the moment, you can see just a little firmness in there, and same thing over in J4X. Well, it's not turned yet, but it will turn soon. But you can see it here. We have <coughs> have not turned in our algo, you know, our quant has not. But oh, we haven't don't have it up there. There's, there's. Our algo is is not turning. You can see it's staying into the weekly sell, just like it is over on, you know. Uh, J4X, but you can see the price tag is starting to move back up, and we've got a green dot and a red dot, so we're starting to see a little volatility action develop. And that is the magic of the day. Now let's take a look at the chat line, see if anybody's asking any questions. But I don't really have much to be, uh, you know, deeper conversation when it comes to the Swiss this morning. I think that uh, it just emphasizes that, eh, you know, they've had a couple days move. It's been a very dramatic uh, marketplace when it comes to the stock market. And so uh, not super dramatic, just dramatic in the sense of, you know, everything was roaring up yesterday and it's doing it pretty firm again today. And it doesn't seem like it wants to stop. It looks like it's just going to keep on marching along. That's what it really comes down to. It has that, we're going to keep on marching along. Exacto presto. All right. Uh, nope. Don't see any questions on the chat line, so we're okay there. I'm sad, actually. I'd rather have questions. Uh, let's take a look at the euro. All right. There. There we go. And euro, same situation. Just down a little bit. Nothing major. Yeah, just double checking the sound. Go over to Chicago Quant, take a peek at what's going on there. You see the euro, same situation, you know, holding up strong, moving up like in J4X, and right in there. And, but both, uh, it, what's curious is here in the, uh, the weekly, in the euro is still in a weekly sell. Same thing with cable, let me go back to the Swiss. And the Swiss is still on a weekly buy. That does have me a little curious. I thought we were going to start to see a trading range moving down. And it would make sense if we start to see that on Monday, then I start to really do believe that the sell means something. But if not, hey Douglas, how you doing? But if not, we don't start to see that weekly start to break down, then what's going to happen is they're going to go climb above these numbers, you know, the, the trading range again. It's going to climb up to that new, that uh, higher end of the range. And for the Euro, go back to it again. The euro will start to flirt and stay around the dot bottom end of the range. So we need to see the weekly to really start to shift gears. And we've always said that, you know, people kind of forget that uh, dailies lead to weeklies, you know, so forth and so on. Uh, and so, uh, you know, when they when they go into a daily sell for a couple of days, if that doesn't hold up, uh, it'll be very quick. Boom. You know, we'll be Right back to moving up, not down again. So that's where we stand. Now we might as well just take a nice peek at the cable. Let's see what the cable's up there. I was just reading it, something on the chat line. Um, cable right there. Same situation. Would be nice. You can see the the five has moved up across the zero line, but the histogram and the green has not. Just flirting with the week, the time manifold itself. You can see lots of strength in there this morning compared to the others. So cable is the one that's holding up, and we're breaking through the 50 percentile. Would like to see this thing get back into the weekly buy, and so we'll be watching that. And let's check it out over on. J4X, but it's going to be reflecting that same thing as that uh, the 
cable is actually stronger against the dollar. Which does not, never, it never surprises me. You know, I always think this, you know, I just get this, you know, if the world loves China with a billion people, then they've got to love the Commonwealth with two billion people. I don't understand it. So, just because they're not all geographically, ge geographically on top of each other, doesn't mean that it's not a, a nice, uh, you know, it's a, it's, it's a good environment. You, get, you know, they have $2,000 a year more in income of the 2,000, uh, the 2 billion people, you know, so on and so forth. You know, so it's, I, I don't understand how the Commonwealth does not take off sooner or later. There's more capitalism going on in the Commonwealth than there is in pretty much probably any other nation state minus the United States and Israel. And, oh, you know, Czech Republic's doing a good job, Hungary's doing a good job, uh, Slovakia's doing a good job, Bulgaria's trying, you know, we see some of the, uh, Romania's trying, there's a lot of, you know, smaller states in Europe that are fighting to try to be more capitalistic and more, you know, uh, free market. Free market, free people. That's what it always comes down to in the end. All right. So, you see cable looking very firm in here, and like I said, I would love to see this get up through the zero line, at least by Monday, you know, start to reflect it in going into next week. That's a good possibility, so we shall see. And, uh, you know, we're flirting up towards the 38-ish area. Uh, the high today was uh, 137.58. So, that is the march. It's marching against the Swiss. It's marching against the Euro. It's marching on its own at this point. All right. Uh, let's see. Where do we go from here? Let's head over to the Turkish Lira. We're moving fast this morning. Without any questions. Douglas, ask a question. It's slow us down a little bit. and see what's going on. Oh, looking still firm. Still looking firm. Right there. Yeah, just another high. Just another high. Another all-time high. That's all it's doing. Inching its way up and up and up. And been in the daily buy since here. Weekly buy sits back here. Just we move this over, but it's just as good. So this product, you know, the Turkish lira, they're. <laughs> I'm, I'm always afraid that we're going to see like 12s, you know, double digits. Uh, you know, I'm always, I don't know, somehow or another, I get that in my head. I have no technical analysis pointing in that direction, but in my head, I keep on hearing numbers. It just says to me that you know this product is going to go higher. It just seems like that's all it wants to do. It seems like it's a planned thing. AD, oh, there you go. Good, good, good. Let's check those out. So, Aussie against the Swiss. Let's see what that's doing this morning. Aussie, 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 Aussie. There's Aussie yen. Aussie Scandinavia, there's Aussie dollar, and let's take this one right there, and make that the Aussie Swiss. Aussie Swiss. that we don't have Aussie Swiss in there. Isn't that amazing? That really surprises me. But we had Aussie Swiss. I could have sworn we looked at that. And uh, cash. A it's a new one. How about that? We haven't done this in a while. A U D. Aussie Swiss right there. Close. 
There we go. And we'll do this one. And there is the Aussie Swiss. Let's see what it looks like. Interesting. Um, see, there's the buy that started off right there. I guess we're running a 3.5. I have to check out what the beta is, but I would guess, let's see, that is minus, minus, and plus. So I'm going to go with the 3.5. So it went into the buy here, right there. Let's fix that. Still in the buy. One, two, three, four, five, six weeks now. Now, where's the daily buys? Now, the first daily buy was right there. Second one, there's a daily sell. There's a daily buy. Buy. There's a daily sell. Is that right? I think it's one back. It's right there. And there's the buy again. And there's the sell again. We'll have to change the colors to these. Not there. Right there is the sell. And then there's the buy. And there's the sell. And there's a the buy. Okay. Ooh, that's a little choppy there, isn't it? But it's alright. We'll see how that plays out. So there's that. And then that's good. That's a cell. And then this is a cell right there. And then right there is another cell. Very tight. <coughs> and we're a bit in a buy since here. So that was a winner. That was a small winner. This was a very small winner. This was a, I guess I would say that's a loss. And then that was, and here is the next winner right there. Very small or fair, but that is the AUD Swiss. Now, let's just save that. Let's take a look at Euro against the dollar again. We'll go back to that. Right there. Yeah, just showing that sideways action there, you know. Nothing really major. Um, let's see. Not like the way the Swiss was moving there. And then, let's take a look at, uh, let's see, well, you can see here, we're still in that weekly sell on the Euro. So, it's got to do some work. And then, let's take a look at the S&P 500. Right. Let's see if right. We're in there somewhere. There it is. And here is the S&P 500. Right there. Showing lots of strength and at the highs of the day already. They don't seem to want, like I said, they don't seem to want to let the stock markets down. Also, Boy, is there rumbling. There is so much rumbling about uh, the chairman. You know, in other words, you know, the, uh, the progressives don't want him back. Biden is trying to keep things smooth. So, uh, you know, they, they, as far as they're concerned, he's, they, they're going to appoint him. But every week that goes by, you know, especially when we get into December, because his appointment's in January. We don't see an appointment by December. People are going to start to get nervous about that. I myself have been thinking that they wanted to put Blinder in there, but I'm not even sure what's going on anymore uh, when it comes to, I mean, they, they've moved a couple communists into key positions. I mean, yes, communists, not socialists, not just liberal Democrats. They've actually moved a couple, they're trying to put one in, the, in, this, banking, uh, in this banking position and uh, you know, she's anti-bank and anti-capitalism, and she, she's a communist. 
and uh, she graduated like you know Lenin Lenin University or uh, Moscow University something like that and she wrote a thesis on the idea of removing the banking system and for some right reason Biden wants her in there to be in charge of banks so anyway uh, you know anything's possible at this point in time it's just, the whole world is upside down as far as I'm concerned all right and so there we are there's those three the uh, Aussie Swiss the Aussie against the, the uh, euro against the dollar and uh, the S&P 500 which is you know been very strong very strong here the last couple of days <coughs> and you can see it over here on J4X, same situation, very strong. Right there with the white line. All right, so from Turkish Lira, we'll go to Euro Lira and see how that looks. And I'm sure they are moving that up to all-time highs, too. Let's put that up on the screen so you can see it. Right there. And at the same time, let's put it up on J4X. Euro, right there, Turkish Lira. So it's trading at 1070. So that pressure just keeps on building on the upside. Same thing there on the Chicago Quant. You can see it's just flying up, up, and away. And uh, the daily buy is now going on a, was that the three? This is the sixth day in a daily buy. Let's put a line in there for you. Right there. And we're on the fourth week, going closing this week on a fifth week in a weekly buy. So the pressure is on the upside in this product, and it doesn't seem to want to stop. All right, now from there we go over to Canada, and Canadian's been just moving down, down, and down. I mean, we've been in a weekly sell just for one week, going to be two now. We've been in a daily sell for 10 days now. You can see that there. Daily sell all the way down from here to there. And at the same time, we keep on seeing pressure on, as you, as, uh, you know, we, we see, uh, actually this morning I noticed gold was uh, not as firm as it had been last night. There's the CAD right there, just to show you, basically almost unchanged, but that long ride down. Now let's take a look at gold this morning, right there. And there's the gold. You can see they're pressing it down and trying to get into a cell now. And they've really pushed on the weekly. They look like they were really bringing it to life yesterday. Rob and I were talking about that. But <laughs> it doesn't seem to want to hold up. Now let's take a look at crude oil. Now that's firm. And so that's probably why we're seeing this just like right there. Because the uh, gold is going down. If it had been going up, there would be even more pressure on it, but either way, the Canadian seems to want to go down no matter what the uh, ancillary products are, like oil or gold are, are doing. So that is kind of interesting in its own right. And as you can see right there, you know, the gold is trying to move down there. And, uh, let me just go back to the gold one more time. So we're heading towards the lows of the day. So let's see, it touched 1800, and now we're trading at 1771, 72, 72. So we're at 72. So it's 28 dollars down. Out of nowhere, we just start to smack it, and that's the unfortunate thing for the metals complex is it just does not have that conviction, and that weekly is trying to warn us. All right, let's finish off the uh, other currencies and then we'll come back and look at silver and platinum and so forth. Here's a South African Rand, which is probably not going to be very happy this morning with 
to this type of action. Right there. No, oh, look at that, still moving down. South African Rand's moving down. I would have thought it would have been, you know, moving up. Let's find it right over here. There's a thought. Dollar Rand. And it is, it's moving down. You can see that. You know, a little pressure is there. This is the third day that we're in the cell. That. So you see the red right there. And we're in that weekly buy. So we're really trapped when it comes to the South African Rand and trying to understand the metals market. To me, it's saying it's going to be sideways. That's what it says to me. With a weekly buy and a daily sell and gold going down 20 some odd dollars today. That's what that's saying there. Now let's check out, oh, yeah, ruble. Right there, there's the ruble. See, rubles on the second day of a sell. It's a little weak. It's been, uh, where is it? Let's see on the fact check spreadsheet. Ruble is, where is it? Right. There it is. Nine weeks in a sell, as you can see right there. Nine weeks in a sell. So these little bounces only are that, you know, just little profit takings. The overall trend is down, which is kind of interesting. You know, we another that just like the way we feel about the cable, we feel about this, this the uh, uh, the ruble with the Russian Federation. We keep on thinking that it should be a lower value. All right. Uh, next one we look at is yen. You can see the yen's trying to march up. We're at the highs there. Let's see. Right there. And it's moving up pretty well this morning. Making some highs in there. When's the last time we were up in this area? Let's take a look and see. We'll do it on J. It's been a while. Over a year. Almost two years since we've been this high up. And so the weekly buy, which has been going on now for going on a fifth week, uh, today. Uh, at the same time, we've been in a daily buy for four, six, eight, nine days and five weeks. So the buyers are, you know, heading in that direction, or say the sellers, I guess you could say, is when you're when the when the yen goes up to like 115 or 116, it means there's more yen needed to the dollar. All right. And then last but not least, we take a look at the Mexican peso. There. The peso seems to have plateaued, which is kind of odd. It's not doing that slam. And we're in a daily sell for two full days. This is the third day, but they are not slamming it. That's the interesting part right there. No slam, just kind of a, a leak, like a leaky boat, slowly, you know, losing buoyancy. All right, from there we're going to go back over to the metals complex. We'll take a look at silver. Let's see, right there. Let's see, silver. Right there. And let's see what the silver's doing. It's probably moving down also. Yep. Silver's making its little dash down. It's flirting. And the weekly, which was very close this morning, very close, has now rolled over. Just the same way gold has rolled over. So both of them are showing pressure. Let's take a look at platinum this morning. Platinum moving down a little bit. Nothing major, but... You know, because it seems to be holding up much better in value. All right, and then uh, last but not least, we take a look at copper, which has been on a rampage, on a hot buying mood. We went in there into the buy two days ago, and 
Oh, it's going from the, the mid low 50s, I guess it is. 51. So now it's trading at 73, 72, 72. Huh. So that's the, the excitement of our view of the metals complex. If anybody has any question in particular about one of the metals, we can go back to it. We're just trying to, you know, keep an eye on all the products that relate to the currency markets. And these are definitely things that relate to the currency markets. All right, um, let's see, where do we go from here? I guess we jump over to, uh, we've done the metal, so we'll take a look at crude oil and heating oil, and we'll take a look at uh, natural gas. So there's the crude oil, as, as we saw before when we looked at Canadian. It's holding up and moving up. And you can see on J4X, same situation. You know, it's moving up. It's not letting go, that's for sure. It is a battle of up, up, and away. I don't think we have any other way to describe it, but up. All right. Mouse drops down. Let's check out the natural gas. You see, natural gas is kind of flattish or down, flirting again with the daily sell. But the weekly buy's been on for two, four, six. Is that right? Two, four, six. This will be eight weeks. Eight weeks in a weekly buy. They don't seem to be giving that up whatsoever. Let's take a look at it over on J4X. Right there. That's just a little weakness this morning, nothing major. And you can see here, J4X is still pointing up. Ours has rolled over. Give it some time. It, the J4X will catch up to our work. Then uh, let's take a look at heating oil. there and that's going for the highs and that's at 260 almost now when's the last time we even saw anything like that a couple of years now a couple of years so the energy complex keeps on finding ways to go up in value and our work keeps on pointing up in value so the combined Two say, don't be too short. You know the cells are just profit taking, but they're not like changing the direction. All right. Now from there we drift over to the stock market, the S and P's. So we'll go like that, right there. And put that up. There we are. Let's go back to the S and P. J4X at the same time. Right there. So holding up very well in there, still climbing, and on a day to day, intraday basis itself, right there, you can see we're off the highs, but not by much. You're looking at a high at 53, and the thing has gotten down to about 50. So you're only talking about two and a half to three handles, which is not you know, anything death defying. You can see there, uh, let's see what else we got to say about that. Oh, okay, that's the, now let's take a look at the, the uh, weekly, because I believe we're through the weekly on uh, Chicago Quant at this point. And we're down. There it is, there's the S&P. You can see we're flirting with a weekly buy with no problem, we're in a daily buy. And I, I was looking at that a little while ago and I was thinking, where can this thing go? I mean, I guess, they're going to try to drive it to the all-time highs again? Seems like it's a melt-up. You know, they, but there's been a lot of talk about that. Uh, Mr. As we were talking about uh, the Fed chairman, Mr. Powell, and he does want to get re-elected again. I'm sure Biden or his people are interested in having him elected again to be Fed chair again. But at the same time, the, the Elizabeth Warren and a few of the and uh, Bernie Sanders and so forth want him out. 
They want a full-fledged communist in there running things. And that's where we are with the S&P 500. Now let's take a look at, uh, let's go back to intraday. There we are. You can see it's just trying to move down a little bit. A little weakness here now. Now let's take a look at the NASDAQ 100 right there. Doing the same thing, made it you know, high over the 15,100 area. Now we're backing off down about 25, uh, 35 points, something like that. And at the same time, so let's put it up on daily there. Not there. Not there. It's right there. Right there. There's the Tech 100. So that's the uh, the action we're seeing with that. It's trying to lift, and you know it's going. You can see the weekly. Can you see the weekly? No. Let's put the weekly up there. Right here. Right there. You can see the weekly's trying to get through. Also, we have just a little circle there, and that daily. You know, it's just marching up. It doesn't seem to want to stop either. The strength is there, and it doesn't, like I said, it's, they don't know how to stop this at this point. This thing just keeps on marching up, and it, and it to me, as far as I can tell, um, with the PAL situation, there's no reason to believe that they're not going to keep it very firm. That's pretty much the, the gist of it all, I guess you could say, at this point in time. All right. Uh, next one we take a look at is the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average. Right there, Dow 30. Again, you know, showing that strength. Taking a look at the intraday. Right there. Same way, holding up. We're at the bottom end of the range on the intraday. You can see that with the histogram right there. And at the same time, the the, uh, the bottom algorithm at the same time, both of them are pushing basically. And you can see time manifolds tightening up a little bit here. But it kind of, you just got that, at least I have that feeling that the, they're just going to keep on pushing this stuff. They got them trapped and there's no reason to let them go. Can you imagine you being stuck in a short in these products? thinking it was going to go down one more time. Wow. Looks like yesterday was part of it, you know, where they just started covering. And then we'll take a look at it, the daily. Right there. There it is. And you see here, we're through, the weekly came in in a weekly, so we're not losing it. At the beginning of the week, though, the Dow Jones Industrial Average was reflecting weakness, you know, in the weekly for Monday and then Tuesday. And then Tuesday afternoon, they roared it back up going into the evening. And after those lows on Tuesday, and it's been one massive move up, over a 1,000 points now. And we've gone for the 34,000 area, and we're at the 35,000 area now. So just over a three-day period, we have swung that aggressively. So that is the stock indices. We seem to have a lot of time on our hands today. It seemed like we marched through everything really quick. And just looking around, just trying to find, you know, something out there that shows us the action and justifies what we're looking at here. So far, it doesn't seem to be, you know, there's there's not a lot of, uh, you know, not a lot of drive or commitment for the the way they're treating the markets at the moment because, again, the Fed chairman, I've said it like five times here today, you know, without, without clarity with this Fed chairman situation, it's going to get really, really dicey because I think the markets need, let's put it this way, I think money would like to see things, they like to see things stay consistent. And with Mr. Powell possibly getting bounced, that would be kind of a freak out. 
that definitely would be a freak out. They would be like, wait a second here, you know, what's wrong with this picture? And that is basically where we're at at the moment. So, you know, you can see the stocks are reaching because they figure that Powell has no other direction. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know, you know, I don't have a strong opinion except for, uh, you know, when it comes to, you know, what they're going to do with Powell over the next couple of weeks, I don't think they're going to make an announcement. I think, you know, the, the administration is so upside down at this point that they don't have the, the luxury to be able to make statements about that. In other words, they need, they need to keep their, their, uh, their coalition together, and they're really having problems with that coalition right now. So that is uh, really where we stand with it all. You can see here on the J4X, the strength in there is starting to come up also. And before you know it, we'll be at all-time highs. And everybody will be scratching their heads saying, hmm, I thought we were going down. And we did. We went down, it stopped, and now it's going back up again. All right. Anybody care to see anything particular? Oh, Russell. Let's take a look at the Russell. Yeah, usually we do take a look at the Russell, but... Not normally have we lately looked at the Russell, except for when we're looking at a daily basis. So, not there. Let's go back to there. And here is the Russell. Let's find it. Right. It's been really strong, the Russell. You're going to find this very interesting. Because I always find it interesting right there. There's the Russell 2000. And... It didn't make the. We talked about this weeks ago, where you know it, you know it made a higher low, and then started making a higher high. You know, it took out these highs, and it took out this high, then it made another higher low again for a third time, and this time it didn't take out the high. We talked about that, and then it looked like it was trying to do some type of triangle thing, and now we have a a, a higher low again, and this time we have taken this high out. So. Um, this is our weakest of the four indices. You know, the uh, Russell 2000 is very low cap, and it, it, to me, it's saying that uh, you know they're going to give it a, a run possibly to the end of the year with all this strength here. We really and it, notice it's been in a weekly buy for four weeks now. That's the other thing too is that it's been in a weekly buy for four weeks. And we thought this was odd when, when the other stock indices and the Dow found themselves in weekly sells. The Russell, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, where the Russell was still in a weekly buy. I think it was the second week, so we haven't looked at it. I don't think we looked at it last week. But it, it really has been screaming at us that it has no interest in going down. So in other words, the most speculative stocks, the cheapest of the stocks, are not being sold. They're not profit-taking, which you know, should make shorts pretty nervous. Now uh, they should be thinking, uh-oh, this thing has so much more room to go on the upside, or at least sideways. If it's not going to take out more highs, it will just go sideways in here and just be nondescript in a sense. All right. So there it is with the Russell. Now, from there, uh, let's see, we've done all the currencies. We've done all the metals and we've done all the energies. So the only thing left to look at, and we've done the stock indices, is uh, you know any exotic currency that anybody wants to see, or would you like to look at Apple Computer or you know anything else out there? We can take a peek at some of the other things we normally don't look at, like an Amazon or you know that type of thing. Google, Facebook, you know, anybody care to see them? We'll go look at them. charts together like that and you can see that you know what is it the Dow Jones Industrial up, up now 230 points the, the Nasdaq up 44 what is amazing to me is that the S&P 500 which is up 20 now yesterday was up over 70 some odd points yesterday 
incredible number, 76 or something like that. Big monster moves. I mean, just dramatic moves. So to me, you can you can only label it two directions. One is they refer to it as a melt up, but to me, it means that the shorts are trying to cover A or B. Uh, they want to be long and they want to dress. They, they want to window dress all the way to the end. In other words, until the end of the year. Remember, money managers make money. Uh, you know, with the account being higher in value. And if they're not willing to sell their products, and they let's say they've hedged it by buying puts, <laughs> they're going to put a lot of pressure on this market. Just a lot, a lot of pressure. All right. Uh, I think I'm going to go peek at some of the exotic stocks that lead this, especially in the Tech 100, like the Apple and the Microsoft and so forth. Let's see. Where are we at? We have that there. So let's put it up right here. Move it over to that. Let's take a look at Apple. Because Apple did not get into a daily buy yesterday, which was very curious with all that strength. I'd imagine today they're doing it. That's Tesla two days in a buy, and it's been in a weekly buy for a long while now. We have a line in there? Yeah, we've been in a weekly buy since June of Tesla from the, um, is that the $600 area? And now we're in the uh, $800 area. There's Apple this morning. Apple's pushing through into its daily buy. It's in a weekly sell now since, I guess it's right here. There? Is it a three five or? A, I don't think it's a three. No, I don't think it's a three five. But I'm not sure what's going. On. I know what it is. That the, yeah, it's a three five because the histogram is the um, the five. So we went into the cell this week here, and it fell from the one fifties down into the low, the high one thirties. That in there. week there's pressure moving down from there and then especially with the three five and then you can see uh, you know the, the little buy here for a couple days it went up and now they're really trying to turn it up today um, so the cells have been you know it was a good sell from here and didn't go into the buy until there and since we're in a weekly sell you wouldn't touch it anyway you go back into a sell here and you had a nice little sell off for about five or six bucks again. And then had a sell off here for that. Even had hard times yesterday getting in. We had a volatility indication and it was up there, but just couldn't get into the daily buy there in the Apple. I want to see what Facebook's doing. There's Facebook. Now it's been in a weekly sell since here, since this area there. Yeah, let's put that in. And I uh, went into the cell right there. Let's put the daily cell in. There you are. And we jumped into a buy for a few days. And then back into the cell. And we've been in the cell even up to the, today. We're in a cell. So it's been in the cell since then. Doing a little bounce here, but not able to get this stuff into the plus side. So we're in a weekly sell and a daily sell with this product when it comes to the Facebook. I see. Uh, again, traders, if anybody sees a currency that they would like to look at or any other product, let me know. If not, I'm just going to keep on roaming around, just doing a little exploratory work of my own. And we'll just discuss about them. And, you know, since we've looked at everything we normally look at, I'm not even sure how we got through it so fast today. But we did. And then there's Google. You see Google's playing with its buy number here today, finally. 
And looks like it's flirting with its weekly buy over there too. No. So it's pushing into the buy again here. After the phone, yeah, fell into the cell right here. And so it looks like this week we'll try to push it back into the buy. Google's been holding up really well, you know, with uh, the way Amazon has. Let's take a look at the Amazon. There's the Amazon pushing into the buy like Apple today. And been in a weekly sell just a couple weeks from here. Two full weeks. And it seems like it's still flirting with a sell as we look at it right now. Um... You know, I don't know even how to describe what the fangs are going through at this point because, you know, it's it's been an interesting sell-off where they pushed it down, but the fangs didn't exactly get that beat up, but they're not buying them at the same time. So they're profit-taking in them, but they're not shorting them. And they're not reaching for them, they're just keeping them firm. And you can see the Facebook, which is kind of like the, the leader of that kind of group in, a, in many ways. That's why it starts off with the F, fang. And for Facebook, also the name, of course, but definitely Facebook is the leader. And Facebook isn't a weekly and daily sell, and it's having a hard time getting into the buy. And uh, then we heard this morning that was it Microsoft, which owns LinkedIn, has, I guess they're turning it off in China. So in China, it was on, but they don't like social media, so they, uh, you know, the government does dislike social media. So they're, they're working to turn it off at the moment. So that's going to be going out the door. All right. Um, where else can we go around here? Let's see what else is doing. That's those. So it's Amazon and Google. We saw Apple and we saw Facebook. Huh. Let's see. This. Then we showed you Tesla too. That's right. Here's those marijuana stocks. We have, we follow the woman. I want to show you that because it's down, I don't know, 70, 80% from its all-time high. That's awful low. Uh, I don't think that they're really that much of a buy. I think they're way overpriced, personally. But everybody gets excited about the idea to be able to sell drugs legally. Or, in this case, marijuana. And right there, this is the... This is the uh, marijuana company and you can see it's been in a weekly sell <laughs> well, went into a weekly sell here in the 20s and it's been in a weekly sell ever since this is 3.5 again and um, I believe the product at one time got up into the 50s so you're talking about a product that's 80% now 80% under its high it's a, just a massive number. It reminds me of Citibank, you know, where you look at City and City is uh, something like, uh, you know, 80% underneath its all-time high. And I keep on trying to tell you how good it's doing. But in essence, it's, uh, it's in the 80s under its all-time high percentage-wise, which is pretty dramatic, which is usually what we call bankrupt. So these uh, marijuana companies have not really been that profitable. Um, you know, they're firm at times, but the stocks themselves are way overvalued. But no one wants to let them go. You know, they'd rather just hold on to them and, you know, and, and wait three or four years or five years and let them grow out of that problem. And that'll probably be the way. Because they probably want to have a, a position in that industry. A lot of people do. They want to have that position. And if they get out of it, then when the thing does go up, then they're chasing it. They don't want to chase it. So. I imagine they're just dollar cost averaging over time if you're a fund. And that's usually the way it works. It just goes into that process where they do that. All right. Let's see. All right. There we go. So, what's the next one we go for? Let's take a look at, let's, let's close that out. See what kind of sector we can find. Close. There we are. 
here's the commodities. So we've looked at the crudes and the, oh yeah, here we go. This is something that I, I keep an eye on very closely, and that's the 30-year the bond. Now, 30-year bond, you can see when it rises in price, right here, as it's rising in price, that means interest rates are dropping. And that was pretty much the, the motivation when they saw, you know, in other words, inflation is usually governed by interest rates. But in this era, interest rates don't seem to have much of an effect. Uh, I mean, they do, they have an effect, they just don't do anything with them. They're not, in other words, they're so controlled by the central bank that they just, you know, just kind of hang, they just kind of do their thing. And, and uh, the central bank keeps them in check and tries to chase away any selling of uh, the bonds. In other words, they step up and they buy 50% of whatever bonds are out there, if not more. They're constantly buying bonds. They've got billions and billions of dollars constantly coming into the market, new, to do it themselves. So in essence, they're taking money out of one pocket and they're putting it in the other. And when they had a $100 bill in one pocket and they move it to the left pocket, now they say they have $100 there, and all of a sudden now they supposedly have $200, which they don't. All right, now take a look at Bitcoin. There's, there's a lot of news out there on the cryptos. And there's Bitcoin right there, that's the, the macro. And you can see there it's been holding up for days upon days. They are, uh, you can see it's over $60,000 now in Bitcoin. There's serious talk of allowing active trading by the Securities Exchange Commission into all that product. And that's something that, you know, uh, you know, people have been wanting for a long time. They got the Bitcoin future, and you know, Bitcoin topped out in the 60s, fell down into the 30s, and you know, lost 50 some odd percent. And now they're going to start ETFs using Bitcoin. And so what will happen is, um, the way it will work is they'll create the ETFs following the futures contract. But they don't seem to be, they're, basically they're admitting in many ways that the future contract is just not that liquid. Whereas, that'll open the doorway. I think uh, in America, what it really comes down to is the stock market, most people have brokerage accounts with you know, stock they can buy. You know, an equity account, in other words. But when it comes to a futures account, they don't really reach towards the futures accounts here in the States. So... Something like only like 15% uh, of the investment public is involved in the futures. And you know what? They don't trade the currencies here in the States. We, we're not that, you know, as much as you would think we are, we're not that, that involved in trading currencies. We let the currencies just do their thing. And, uh, you know, we're, everything is euro -cent uh, dollar centric here. You know, dollar, king dollar, king dollar, this and that. No one really pays attention to the other currencies. Whereas, you know, I do my webinars, what we try to do is we try to follow currencies like as if we're not in the United States, like as if we're outside the United States, which I, gives a better perspective, makes it a little bit more logical, and helps other investors from outside the United States to appreciate the math to it all. So, you know, you see here the cryptos, they call them the cryptocurrencies, I don't see them as currencies, but... And the end result is that the uh, ETFs that they're going to create are going to be uh, based off of the Bitcoin futures and Ethereum futures. And it'll open like the market up by like 80%. It'll be dramatic. More investors able to access the market, be able to participate. Because they'll do it through the ETFs. They'll be able to buy them and hold them. Then they'll create options. And the options market will probably be pretty hot. Equity options are so much better than futures options. Futures options are very, very tough and very illiquid, and uh, they've gotten better from the the you know the lack of floor because there's a lot of brokerage houses that try to make markets in them, but they're still not the most liquid of all the products. And and so even uh, you know so in the end result is that the ETFs are going to be very positive. It's going to be very positive for the, uh, the cryptocurrencies. We'll see how that rolls. I don't think we're going to be stuck in the same situation. Um, I wonder if we have Coinbase. Let's take a look at Coinbase real quick. Here, there's the 
that's the Bitcoin up there right now, but let's go find Coinbase. That that has become to me one of the really first good products in the ETF universe. Now this is the exchange Coinbase. Let's see, where's that? There it is, Coin. And you'll see it's a pretty good product, you know, it really is. Um, we're back into the we went into the weekly sell up in here, and we were in a daily sell, and then we went into a little buy, but still in that daily sell, and then we went into a sell again, it was a nice win, and now, you know, we're flirting with, we went to the weekly buy last week, went into the daily buy right here, and what is very impressive about these ETFs in the crypto world, right, oh, I guess we can move that, we can move that, and put it down lower, yeah, right there, and so, there's your daily buy, and it's been a wonderful ride. And it's in a buy here. It's riding up. And it's still in a buy. From that buy there, there was a volatility signal. And uh, the histogram. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, so we did go into a sell one day. And then we went right back into the buy. -in. There we go. Let's do that. Oh, there we go. Let's go like that. There it is. So there's the sell. And then the next two days, it goes back into the buy. That's what it is, right? And you can't take the short from the sell because we're in a weekly buy here. So this has been very impressive, and this is today live. You can see the strength is coming in more because they're anticipating this ETF situation, which will bring in lots more investors, traders. All right, that's the end of looking at the market here today. Uh, we went through everything from marijuana stocks to Turkish lira. I mean, we did it all today. We looked at Apple too, and we looked at Apple and Amazon, and, uh, you know, and. Uh, Google and Facebook, and we got a good flavor of what's going on there. All right, traders, have a safe and smart weekend. We will catch you on the Monday, which will be TGIM. So everybody, happy trails to you until we meet again. Happy trails to you, to all our trading friends. It's just a lazy Friday, traders, but look at the equity markets go. We'll just show you that last picture as we... Turn it off. Look at that. They're all at the, at the highs of the day. Just rocketing up. Dow's heading for 265 now. It's just bye bye bye. And bye bye to you.